Hello, hello, welcome back, bienvenue. First off, I'm just gonna let you know that you can follow me on Tumblr, Fangirl Follies, it's as simple as that. Also, I've never really plugged it before, but I do write young adult fiction, and if you're interested, I will link it in the description below. But today, we're gonna talk about something that absolutely fascinates me, and that's people taking history and culture and using it to inspire them creatively. If you remember a few weeks ago, I talked about Avatar The Last Airbender, well, since then, I've had several people ask me to talk about how the Fire Nation was inspired by Imperial Japan. When people think about colonization, they usually think about Western conquering. You know, European powers, more white privilege, England, France, Spain. But most people don't think about other examples or even know that they exist, but they do. The one, of course, we're primarily concerned with today is Imperial Japan and the Great Pacific War, or as we like to think of it, World War II. But for Japan, it started long before that. Japan has a very long and bloody history, and maybe one day I will do a video on the history of Japan or an entire series, but for today, let's keep it simple. During the Meiji era, Japan faced this unprecedented period of rapid westernization and industrialization. You know, once the U.S. really forced the borders open, Japan wanted to learn and they sent people everywhere. They brought back philosophy and politics and technology because for once, Japan realized that they were a very tiny poor nation in terms of the world stage. That just didn't set right with Japan. They wanted to prove themselves to be a major player. They wanted to prove Japanese superiority. So they entered this period of heightened militarization, really laid into the nationalism. School, school became mandatory. And thus began this process of not only creating a new generation of educated people that would become doctors and lawyers and politicians, but it also gave the government direct access into reshaping the next generation. We're talking propaganda, directing thought and history, teaching racial purity, basically brainwashing and indoctrination of Japanese values, along with national Shinto, which is loyalty to the imperial line. The emperor is the father of the nation. He is a descendant of Amatra Su. He is a living god. Does any of that sound familiar? Well, it should because it sounds exactly like the Fire Nation. This is the sort of thing that the Fire Nation taught in their schools, right down to the propaganda and the superiority of the Fire Nation, along with the fact that they were a wealthy nation that should share that with others. Growing up, we were taught that the Fire Nation was the greatest civilization in history. And somehow, the war was our way of sharing our greatness with the rest of the world. But at the same time, they lost part of their culture with their need to become something new, to become stronger. We even have this excellent scene of the Fire Lord boasting to the previous avatar of this. Our nation is enjoying an unprecedented time of peace and wealth. Our people are happy, and we're so fortunate in so many ways. Where are you going with this? I've been thinking. We should share this prosperity with the rest of the world. In our hands is the most successful empire in history. It's time we expanded it. So we have Japan, this very rapidly modernizing society in the East. And they look out at these other Eastern countries. These other Eastern countries with vast resources that they can use. And Japan still views these other countries as somewhat agrarian. So it's Japan's duty to help spread their own wealth and fortune to teach these struggling countries the way to westernization with their superior technologies. There's also this fear of the encroaching West, that unless they provide a strong united Eastern Front, the West will come in and conquer them all. It starts with Manchuria, and then northern China, and then southern parts of Russia, and Korea, and Vietnam. The Philippines, Laos, Malaysia, New Guinea, basically the South Pacific, was wrestled under Japanese control in the most horrific way possible. All well justifying their actions as a nation going in to spread the wealth, to improve their lives. 
but the facts were they enslaved people, tortured them. The atrocities and war crimes that Japan committed was horrifying on a level I'm not entirely sure we've seen before. They labored under this false belief that they were bettering the lives of the people that they conquered, when the truth was they were only benefiting themselves. And this is all glossed over in the Japanese education system. To this day, the children of Japan do not know about the horrific crimes that their country committed because it's censored. It's completely rewritten. But how does that compare to the Fire Nation? Well, they're depicted as a totalitarian regime, the clear antagonist of the show, a condemnation of colonialism. The Fire Nation starts with a complete mass genocide. They wipe out an entire culture, the air nomads. And through the eyes of the main characters, children, we see the real trauma set on these communities, the displacement of people, a mass exodus of refugees. The Southern Water Tribe is left completely impoverished. People all throughout the world are exploited. They're forced into prison and work camps. We see the continued propaganda through the education systems. Children are forced to grow up faster. They are losing their family, barely surviving, and taking on so much more responsibility at younger and younger ages. This is the point where Japan decided that they needed to make a name for themselves, to prove their power, to show the world that they were someone to be contended with. And how do you do that? Well, you pick the fight with the biggest, baddest person you possibly can. Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, and they picked a fight with the U.S. They picked a battle that they just could not win, and they suffered for it. The U.S. eventually defeated Japan, and they occupied the country. One of the first things they did is they forced the emperor to renounce his godhood, and then they dismantled the military. I find it fitting in Avatar that Aang strips Ozai of his firebending. He becomes an average human without his godlike abilities. Avatar The Last Airbender deals with these real world issues. They take these hard hitting topics of discussion that we as adults still try to avoid, and they make it something that is understandable for kids. They present this information to them in a way that is easily digestible and they can form their own opinions. And I think that's important. So if you can think of any other topics that you'd like me to cover, just let me know. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. And for more content, subscribe to my channel. What about me? For now, you're the Melon Lord's forces. So I get to chuck flaming rocks at all of you? Whatever makes the training feel more realistic. Sweetness.